Hello, thank you so much for clicking this video today. I really appreciate it. It's gonna be an awesome video. Cardano governance is finally here. 2017 is when I found Cardano and governance is one of the things that brought me in and you have to be a part of it. This is gonna be a full Cardano governance guide. It's gonna show you who is running Cardano. It's gonna show you how you can be a DRAP, how to sign up as a DRAP, how to delegate to another DRAP. Everything you need to know about Cardano governance is gonna be directly in this video so let's jump right into it so very briefly before we get into governance this is big news so emergo is retiring five of its stake pools emer one two three four and Uroi. so if you are delegated to those stake pools within 28 days you are going to stop losing rewards so take that ada that you have and delegate it to another pool there's also a pool called goat that has retired with still 30 or 40 million ADA in there. So make sure you delegate to another stake pool. I run Bloom stake pools. We actually minted the eighth block ever on Cardano. We've minted 50,000 blocks since then, and we will never retire. I'll be running those nodes till I die. So if you're looking for a good stake pool, you can delegate to Bloom. Also, there are many great stake pools in this ecosystem that you can delegate to. You can go to pooltool.io to see some of those great pools or adapools.org. So let's get into governance. So I wrote this thread on Twitter that really is good guidance for governance. And in this thread, I'm gonna teach you how to be a DRAP. I'm also gonna explain how to go, how governance works on Cardano and the phase that we're in. We're actually in the bootstrap phase right now. So governance is gonna play a crucial role in the future of Cardano. We're not gonna have these founding entities making decisions for us anymore. It's on you. And it's really important that you participate. Imagine a world where we have millions of DRAPs and millions of delegates that are all deciding the future of Cardano. I think that is much better than having, you know, maybe a hundred different DRAPs that have most of the stake. So if you have the time and the knowledge to really dig into Cardano, do that constant research, evolve with the times, learn what's happening, become your own DRAP. It costs about 500 ADA to be a DRAP on Cardano, if you don't wanna pay the 500 ADA, you can delegate your DREP ADA to another DREP that is already live. There are sites where you can look at lists of DREPs. I am actually becoming a DREP, but let's get a little bit more into governance. Explain you know, the three different bodies that have governance powers in Cardano, and then I'll show you guys how you can become a DREP or how you can delegate to another DREP, right? So. The governing bodies, there's three of them. There's the Constitutional Committee, there's DREPs, and then there's stake pool operators. The Constitutional Committee is actually elected, right? And there's two states of the Constitutional Committee. There's normal, which means SPOs and DREPs both approve of the committee, and then there's no confidence. And you know, DREPs and FBOs can state no confidence, and this means they believe the Constitutional Committee needs to be replaced. So as I mentioned, we're currently in this bootstrap phase. So during the bootstrap phase, it's 90 days long from the chain hard fork, and during that phase, we actually have an interim Constitutional Committee. I'm gonna have a link down below where you can go and take a look at that interim Constitutional Committee. They were actually all voted in by ADA holders in the community. I also have this little chart here that you guys can look at, and it shows you what the bodies can actually govern on Cardano. There's different things that each party can govern. For example, obviously, you know, DREPs and SPOs can vote a motion of no confidence, but the Constitutional Committee can't because they're not, you know, why would they do that for themselves, of course, right? And then, you know, SPOs and DREPs can vote on a new committee. Uh, they can also, you know, no SPOs can vote on updating the Constitution or proposal policy. You know, all three vote on hard forks. Only DREPs and CCs vote on protocol parameter changes and treasury withdrawals. And then all of these bodies can submit an info action. So because Chang is so new, not all of these wallets have updated to actually support Chang. Eternal is really the best wallet that most people are using. What you do is you go into Eternal, you go into the voting tab once you're in there, and I have a screenshot of that down here. So once you're in this voting tab here, then you have two options, your own account 
or specify DREP ID. If you click own account, you're gonna pay 500 ADA to become a DREP and then all of the ADA that you have in your wallet is actually going to become uh, you know, a, a voting pool. And you can get other people to delegate to your DREP ID. And once you get that ID, you just have to share it for somebody else. Once you have that ID, you can come down here, you can click specify DREP ID. This is mine right here. I'm gonna post this in the description in the comments if you guys would like uh, you know, to, to me to vote for you if you don't have the time to focus on Cardano. I'm also gonna get into you know, why I'm a DREP, you know, some of my motivations, some of my experience and, you know, my past, but I'm going to do that at the end of the video in case you guys want to be a DREP. You don't have to watch that part of the video, right? So, you know, there is other wallets that you can do this in. Lace is the way to do it. If you are using one of the wallets that's not supported yet, you know, think of wallets as a window into the blockchain, right? Your mnemonic phrase is your private keys that allows you to spend. So if you type in that mnemonic phrase to Eternal and you're not already using Eternal, your same wallet's going to pop up. You're not going to have to restake. You're not going to do it, have to do anything, really. So if you want to recover your wallet in Eternal, feel free. I'll post the link for Eternal down below. You want to make sure you're getting the right Eternal or you could lose your funds, right? Very important that you're using the right Eternal, you know, when downloading any wallets in crypto. You got to have the right one or you're going to get hacked, right? So... You know, during this 90 day period, there are certain things that are allowed to be done. For example, one thing that really surprised me is the interim constitutional committee can actually change protocol parameters in the next, oh, sorry about that. In the next 90 days, they'll actually be able to uh, change protocol parameters, uh, which I, you know, I thought was, was quite interesting. So yeah, you know, governance, governance is here. Um, you know, some great sites to use for this. Uh, one here is gov.tools. This isn't actually live yet, but this is the official government, you know, governance tooling site. Make sure you use this one. Uh, you know, when it, it'll probably be live within the next couple of weeks, if I had to guess. And then I found another site called 1694.io. And this is my DREP here. I currently have 1.61 million ADA. You can come in here and you can also go to DREP list. And in the DREP list, you can see some of the potential DREPs that you can delegate to. Uh, you know, pretty awesome. You know, it, it, I actually generated my DREP keys in Linux and it was, it just felt, uh, you know, serendipitous almost. Like it was like, wow, you know, here I am seven or eight years later and governance is finally here. Cardano is now the largest decentralized blockchain in the entire world with on-chain governance. And you have the power to bring a better future to the world and to the blockchain. So very exciting. Uh, now I'm going to get into, you know, why I'm being a DREP and kind of, you know, how I'm going to handle policy moving forward in our ecosystem. So first I'll get into my history in Cardano. I actually found Cardano in 2017 and I started making educational videos. And you know, I've made about 300 educational videos since then. I've taught people how to build a stake pool. I've taught people how to stake. I've kept people up to date on Cardano on Twitter and YouTube. And I actually started a stake pool in the third day of the incentivized test net. And that was in, I think 2019 actually, in December of 2019. And I ran an ITN pool for the entire time by myself. And then I got with a few other people and we created a company called Bloom. And we actually minted the eighth block on Cardano. Our stake pools have been live without issues for over four years now. And I've gotten a lot of knowledge about the chain, you know, from running the stake pool. I'm actually the node operator as well. And, you know, on top of that, I've learned a lot about Cardano's protocol parameters from, you know, interviewing Charles Hoskinson or interviewing experts, you know, on some of these protocol parameters. Uh, you know, some other experience I have, I, you know, co-hosted Rare Bloom. It was, you know, Cardano's first and largest event ever hosted. We had about 600 people come out, 44 booths, 22 speakers. It was live streams to tens of thousands of people. Uh, on top of that, I've been working on a platform called Atrium. 
And Atrium allows you to, you know, it has multiple different smart contracts already built into it live on testnet. The goal of Atrium is to make Cardano easy. We've shipped 24 educational videos to teach people about Cardano. You know, we believe millions of users are going to come to Cardano and we've built a platform that's going to make their onboarding process easier. Starting with what is a wallet? What is blockchain? What is Cardano? What is staking? All of that is going to live directly in this educational dashboard with wallet features. Our two smart contracts, the first one allows you to delegate to over 100 different stake pools at the same time, bringing multi-delegation to Cardano. The second one allows you to mint profile NFTs that you can level up over time by engaging with your favorite projects on Twitter or Discord uh, and on chain. All of this is live on testnet right now, alpha.atrium.io. We're actually doing an airdrop right now for people that try out the testnet. The higher level that you get on your profile NFT on testnet, the more rewards you're going to get airdropped to you on mainnet. And all of those customization options that you unlock are going to bring over to mainnet if you mint a mainnet profile NFT. Right. So that's kind of my experience, some of the stuff I'm working on. And let's get into kind of my motivations and also, you know, my policy, like, you know, what kind of, you know, voter will I be? Right. So I am against large budget spending. When you, you know, fund somebody with, say, 200 million ADA, for example, a lot of that money is going to be sold, right? That ADA is going to be sold. There has to be somebody else in the world willing to buy that. And that's going to bring the price of ADA down. So when you fund anything, you have to be making the bet that this proposal is bringing more value to the blockchain, you know, in time than we are spending right now. So I am going to lean on the side of conservative, right? I don't think that there should be any proposals of 200 million. I think that there should be a proposed budget uh, per year. I don't think that we should spend much of that treasury money. I think that we should spend some to fund scaling, you know, to fund, you know, layos or input endorsers or ZK rollups. You know, it's it would be a good idea to fund L2s that aren't parasitic to the layer one blockchain, right? And then as far as protocol parameters, right? I'm also going to be quite conservative on protocol parameters. And, you know, I'm also going to be listening to the community a lot. If you read my Twitter, I, I post these questions and it may look like engagement farming, but I honestly learn a lot from you guys. I'll post a question, you know, like, what do you think of raising K? And I'll get hundreds of replies and gather that community sentiment. And it really allows me to kind of learn the opinion of the community, you know, learn what's right for the future. So, you know, I'm really going to lean on the conservative side, but I also think that, you know, governance is a huge tool to grow Cardano and bring the value to individuals, you know, in the world. You know, that's why a lot of us are here. We believe blockchain can remove the middleman and bring value to the edges. And I think Cardano can do that. And I think we're in a great spot to do that. And I believe that we can use, you know, governance and treasury funds to build more products and software uh, to, you know, push power to the edges. And I think Cardano has already done that quite a bit. And I think that really this is the beginning of that happening on an exponential scale. So if you guys want to delegate to me, you know, feel free. Ha always happy to hear your opinions, your suggestions. If you don't like what I vote for, make sure you tell me. You know, one thing that I will promise you is that I am not stuck in my ways, right? I constantly evolve and learn from the people that, you know, criticize me or attack me or provide, you know, valuable suggestions. I read them, I listen, and that is one thing that I pr can promise is, you know, I will grow and learn more from this experience and also learn more from your feedback. So, you know, everything that I know now isn't, you know, what I'm going to believe a year from now. And I'll keep you guys updated as uh, those beliefs change uh, in this ecosystem. And yeah, I'm excited. Governance is here. Thank you guys for tuning into the video. If you made it all the way to the end, comment, governance is here. And um, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.